I want to emphasize that this isn't about fostering fear or mistrust. It's about recognizing that in the chaos of a crisis, situations can become intricate. One agency that often takes center stage during these times is FEMA. Their mission is undeniably crucial, aiding communities in their recovery. However, their methods can sometimes feel overwhelming. It's essential to understand your rights and be prepared to navigate potential challenges. Your home is your sanctuary, place of safety and security. While government officials have a vital role to play, you also possess rights that must be respected. You have the right to privacy and the right to protect your property. I recall a friend who faced a hurricane. In the aftermath, FEMA agents arrived in her neighborhood, undoubtedly overwhelmed by the task at hand. Yet she felt a sense of intrusion when they requested to inspect her home without ample notice. She asserted herself, politely but firmly, insisting on being present during the inspection. Knowledge empowers you. Understanding your rights allows you to approach these situations with confidence and respect. You don't need to be confrontational, but you can be assertive. Remember, FEMA agents are people too, likely grappling with immense pressure. However, this doesn't mean you should compromise your rights. Treat them with respect, but also stand your ground. Building resilience goes beyond stockpiling supplies. It encompasses being informed understanding your rights, and being prepared to safeguard what matters most. It's about fostering a sense of community and supporting one another. In the aftermath of a disaster, we often witness the best of humanity. Communities come together, sharing resources and offering support. This spirit of compassion and cooperation is truly inspiring. Let's take a step back and examine the bigger picture. FEMA, or the Federal Emergency Management Agency, was born out of a need for order in chaos. Before FEMA, disaster response was a patchwork quilt of over a hundred different agencies, each working independently. The result was often confusion, inefficiency, and a lack of coordination. It was in this environment that President Carter established FEMA in 1979. The idea was simple, centralize the government's response to emergencies, creating a unified force to tackle disasters head on. The goal was to streamline efforts, ensuring a quicker and more effective response to those in need. But like any large organization, FEMA has faced its share of challenges. Events like Hurricane Katrina highlighted areas where improvements were desperately needed. The slow pace of recovery and questions about the distribution of aid eroded public trust. These experiences have cast a long shadow, fueling skepticism and mistrust. It's important to remember that the vast majority of FEMA employees are dedicated public servants who genuinely want to help. Yet the agency's history and the weight of public perception create a complex situation. This isn't about blaming or criticizing, it's about understanding the context. Knowing how FEMA operates, its strengths, and its limitations empowers you to navigate potential challenges. We're not here to scare you. Instead, we're focused on building resilience. It's about being informed, prepared, and confident in your ability to protect what matters most. It's about knowing your rights and being ready to assert them respectfully. Remember, FEMA is a tool, a resource that can be invaluable in a crisis. But like any tool, it's essential to understand how to use it effectively. And when necessary, it's equally important to know your limits and boundaries. Let's explore FEMA's role in more detail. FEMA is designed to be a support system, offering assistance and resources to communities in need. They provide a framework for coordinating disaster response efforts, bringing together various government agencies, nonprofit organizations, and volunteers. However, it's crucial to recognize that FEMA's resources are finite. They cannot be everywhere at once. This means that the primary responsibility for your safety and well-being lies with you and your community. FEMA can provide valuable support, but it's essential to be self-reliant and prepared. By understanding FEMA's role and limitations, you can better prepare yourself and your community for potential disasters. You can develop strategies to maximize the benefits of FEMA's assistance while minimizing potential disruptions to your life. Remember, knowledge is power. The more you understand about FEMA and its operations, the better equipped you'll be to navigate the complexities of disaster recovery. It's about being informed, 
not fearful. It's about taking control of your situation and building resilience. While it's essential to be aware of potential challenges, it's equally important to maintain a balanced perspective. Not all FEMA interactions are negative. Many people have had positive experiences with the agency. We aim to provide information and empower individuals not to instill fear. Martial law is a stark reality, a drastic measure governments employ during extreme crises. It's a shift from the familiar world of rights and freedoms to a landscape dominated by military control. Your personal liberties, privacy, movement, property ownership can be suspended and replaced by the authority of the state. Imagine waking up to news of martial law. It's a shock, a sudden disruption of normalcy. The government, through the military, assumes extraordinary powers. This isn't a hypothetical scenario. History provides numerous examples where martial law has been implemented. It's crucial to understand that martial law is a complex issue. While designed to restore order and protect public safety, it often comes at a significant cost to individual liberties. It's a delicate balance between security and freedom. Consider a country that imposed martial law after a devastating natural disaster. Initially, the goal was to coordinate relief efforts and maintain order. However, as time progressed, reports emerged of citizens facing restrictions on movement and access to essential supplies. This highlights the potential challenges and trade-offs associated with martial law. Martial law can create a sense of powerlessness. It's essential to remember that while the government's authority is heightened, your human spirit remains intact. You can still make choices, support your community, and contribute to rebuilding. Let's delve deeper into the implications of martial law. When the government assumes control, it can restrict your movements, dictate where you can go, and even impose curfews. The flow of information becomes tightly controlled, with censorship often in place. The government may also seek to confiscate weapons, creating a debate about public safety versus individual rights. Access to essential supplies can become limited, with the government controlling distribution. It's crucial to understand that martial law is a temporary measure. The goal is to restore order and enable recovery. While it's a challenging time, it's essential to maintain hope and work towards rebuilding your community. However, it's equally important to be prepared and informed about your rights and responsibilities during such a crisis. The potential for government overreach in times of crisis is a sobering reality. As we've discussed, agencies like FEMA can play a crucial role in disaster response. But it's equally important to prioritize your own self-sufficiency. By securing your resources, you're not just protecting your physical well-being, but also your independence and sense of control. Creating a stockpile of essential supplies is a fundamental step. However, it's equally important to consider how to protect those supplies. Concealment becomes a valuable strategy. Imagine having a hidden space, a secret compartment where your life-sustaining resources are safeguarded. It's like having a personal fortress within your own home. Building a subterranean bunker might seem like an extreme measure, but it's an option worth considering. These underground structures offer unparalleled protection and discretion. While the idea might seem daunting, it's often more achievable than you might think. Remember, the key to successful concealment is creativity and resourcefulness. Think outside the box. Where would an intruder least expect to find your supplies? The more challenging you make it for others to locate your stockpile, the better your chances of preserving it. Let's explore some additional strategies. Imagine having all your eggs in one basket. If that basket gets broken, you lose everything. The same principle applies to your emergency supplies. Spreading out your resources across different locations is like having multiple baskets. It significantly reduces the risk of losing everything at once. By diversifying your storage, you're not just protecting your physical assets, but also your peace of mind. If one location is compromised, you still have access to essential supplies elsewhere. It's a strategic move that can make a significant difference in a crisis. Consider using off-site storage, such as a secure storage unit. This adds an extra layer of protection. Rotate your supplies between your home and the storage unit to maintain freshness and security. When choosing hidden spots within your home, think creatively. 
Attics, basements, and crawl spaces are often overlooked. Building secret compartments within walls or under floors can provide even greater security. Remember, the goal is to make it as difficult as possible for anyone to find your supplies. A robust emergency preparedness plan is essential for navigating uncertain times. Diversifying your supplies is a core component of this plan. By spreading your resources across multiple locations, you're creating a safety net for yourself and your family. It's important to strike a balance between preparedness and paranoia. While it's essential to be prepared, it's equally important to live your life without undue stress or fear. Your goal is to be ready, not worried. Remember, preparedness is a journey, not a destination. It's an ongoing process that involves continuous learning, adaptation, and refinement. Stay informed about potential threats and adjust your plans accordingly. Building a resilient community is also crucial. Share your knowledge and resources with trusted friends and neighbors. By working together, you can create a stronger support network. Ultimately, the goal of preparedness is to enhance your quality of life, not diminish it. By taking proactive steps to secure your future, you're empowering yourself to face challenges with confidence and resilience. While physical preparedness is undoubtedly important, mental fortitude is the cornerstone of true resilience. It's your inner strength, your ability to stay calm, focused, and optimistic in the face of adversity. Imagine a ship weathering a storm. The ship itself is strong, but its ability to withstand the tempest lies in its anchor a steadfast connection to something solid and enduring. Your mental fortitude is your anchor. It keeps you grounded when everything else seems to be shaking. Cultivating a positive mindset is crucial. It's not about denying the challenges or pretending everything is okay. It's about recognizing the difficulties while maintaining a belief in your ability to overcome them. It's about finding strength in adversity, drawing inspiration from your resilience, and fostering a sense of hope for the future. Building a strong support network is essential for your mental well-being. Surround yourself with people who uplift and inspire you. Share your concerns, fears, and hopes with them. Together, you can create a safe space where you feel supported and understood. Practicing mindfulness and stress management techniques can also be beneficial. These practices help you stay grounded, reduce anxiety, and improve your overall well-being. Even a few minutes of meditation or deep breathing each day can make a significant difference. Remember, it's okay to feel overwhelmed or scared at times. These emotions are natural human responses to challenging situations. The key is to acknowledge these feelings without letting them consume you. Focus on what you can control, instead of dwelling on uncertainties. Concentrate on taking steps to improve your situation. By focusing on your actions, you'll regain a sense of agency and empowerment. Building resilience is a lifelong journey. It's about continuous growth, learning, and adaptation. It's about embracing challenges as opportunities for personal development. By nurturing your mental fortitude, you're not just preparing for potential crises, you're enhancing your overall quality of life. Let's talk about the importance of discretion. While it's essential to prepare for potential challenges, it's equally important to avoid drawing unnecessary attention to your household. A low-profile approach can help protect your resources and well-being. Imagine being the only one on your block with visible signs of preparedness. It could make you a target in a crisis. People might wonder what you know that they don't. By keeping a low profile, you reduce the risk of becoming a focal point for unwanted attention. Hiding some of your emergency supplies is a crucial part of this strategy. It ensures that your household doesn't rely solely on external aid. It's about self-reliance, a sense of control, and the ability to weather storms independently. Building a strong community is essential for resilience. A network of like-minded individuals can provide support, knowledge, and resources. However, it's important to maintain a balance. Becoming the go-to person for everyone in your community can be overwhelming and unsustainable. It's essential to set boundaries and protect your own resources. Remember, you're building a support network, not a support system. Focus on building a small, trusted circle of individuals who share your values and preparedness mindset. By working together, you can create a strong, resilient community without compromising your own well-being. 
True preparedness encompasses more than just stockpiling supplies. It's about creating a holistic approach that includes physical, mental, and social resilience. It's about understanding the importance of discretion, building strong relationships, and maintaining a sense of self-reliance. By incorporating these elements into your preparedness plan, you're not just preparing for potential crises, you're enhancing your overall quality of life. You're building a foundation of security, independence, and community that can withstand any challenge. Remember, preparedness is an ongoing journey. It's about continuous learning, adaptation and refinement. It's about staying informed, building relationships, and fostering a mindset of resilience. Knowing how to deal with FEMA is just one aspect of dealing with a disaster. Click the video on screen now where we do a complete breakdown on how to survive the first 100 days after any disaster.